Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to use render passes in Cinema 4D and Octane and how to composite everything together in Photoshop. I think it's a little bit difficult to do this in Photoshop and it's a little bit weird, I don't know. So I don't find that much good tutorials about this topic and I did this a couple of times and um, I integrated this in my workflow. So that's because I'm going to show you that today. And yeah, we can start it. Uh, I will split this video in two parts. So this is the Cinema 4D part. So how to set up the render passes and everything. And um, uh, after that I upload another tutorial. Um, yeah, how to use it in Photoshop. And uh, let's get started. So I set up a little scene. It's really pretty small. I don't know, it's just like a plane in the background. And a figure in the foreground. And we can create a little camera. So... I will extrude that a little bit and make it like uh, wait, like this shape here to get something like a studio type of thing. I don't know. So mm, if we want to do that, we need to use a, a render view. And as you can see, I have no lights in the scene and now we create some. Uh, we go for an HDRI environment and for showcase purposes, I go for uh, uh, daylight. That's a little bit stupid to use a daylight in a studio scene, but I show you later why. Um, and I go to mix texture and um, I create a little HDRI with the uh, Grayscale Gorilla HDRI link plugin and we need to go for something like this. So um, we disenable this for now and go for something like uh, an area light. This is area light one. And this is area light two. So we make both a little bit less bright and as you can see everything is washed out so we need to go for aces. I make already I did already a video about that. Uh, aces is also included in this workflow. It's um, important to use. So I didn't uh, call it in the beginning of the video but I mean it's no it's a it's a standard workflow and everything should use it uh, without calling it. I don't know it's it's pretty helpful and uh, it's time to don't use it. So we enable this again. Uh, wait, we just rotate it a little bit. So I think that it's working for now. We go for blue light in here. So if you want to set up the render AOV passes, it's called AOV groups. And um, it's important that you first uh, this is the standard one and you need to go for octane render then you set up this and OCIO and you uh, go for aces uh, color space aces aces cg this is really important so don't go for um, rec 7 or 9 or uh, sl3b that you're using in here because um, the transformation of that is um, really weird and isn't working that well so set up it like that don't use the denoise render passes because we use um, the AOVs so this is not working this is only working if you set up in here and yeah just don't do it and go to the AOV render passes set this to XR oct uh, octane go for 32-bit channel and click on this denoise uh, beauty and enable the denoise in your camera imager that's really important and set this up correctly everything and um, then you go for your render pass thing where you want to save it I save it on my desktop with this weird calling thing I don't know I think it's a it's a <laughs> it's a design artist thing that you call your stuff like I don't know like something like this because you don't uh, want to waste your time about that so you shouldn't do that but I do this every time when I don't want to call it correctly and yeah um, so there's a few things that you can do 
Um, this is your render pass AOV manager. So you go for render AOV manager and you find all your passes in here. Um, two things you can use two setups. So you could render your diffuse direct, indirect, and everything and reflection. So um, if you do that, you have something like your um, uh, your your information passes about. Uh, how the rendering, uh, the renderer uh, used this, uh, this, this technique, techniques and everything. I don't know. This is the, the diffuse channel and the reflection channel. So you have only the diffuse and the reflection. This is how that works. Uh, you could also go for the denoised one, or um, you could go for the lights. And this is what we do today because I really, really like this. Um, but I think I set up a fog volume before because i want to show you also that this is working so we go for some of this stuff so we make it a little bit visible so um we go for the light and the you know uh, and the and the volume passes so search for the noise volume this is working so if you go for the noise volume you only have the volume in here so the, only the fog is shown and if you go to light you could set up a few light passes so you have the sunlight that we also uh, did we that we have and you could go for the area light we also have that one and you can set up the light passes um light id one two and three we have only two lights so the uh, third one isn't needed so we can go for um this pass but I think I will also add something to show you. If you use something like a mission thing, so as example, we go for this thing here. Uh, wait for this lag or something. I don't know. This is glowing. We have a mission. You have also light ID pass in here, so. For the showcase, we also set up this, and as you can see, you have these buttons on the bottom here, and you can see this is your light two, one, the sunlight, and the environment, the HDRI thing, and this is the volume. So you have to the uh, the render passes uh, set it up correctly. That's good, and yeah, you could also set up a C depth pass if you want this is also working so this is um, showing you how the camera see, uh, uh, notice the scene and you can uh, see the depth in uh, of the scene in uh, emission, uh, in, a, in an image that is black and white and um, the thing that goes um, deeper in it is uh, whiter and uh, more in front is black I don't know you, you, you know what I mean I guess um, you can set up the scene that's uh, important uh, on the slider in here. The environment depth is the background. So if you set this up to something less, it's black or gets brighter. If you do more and more and more, it should be probably the max of that. And yeah, you could also so so. You, how is that used? You can use that to uh, post-process your um, DevOps field or you can post-process your background fog and um, use it as a mask to mask out some things uh, without uh, using a, a, yeah, a hand mask or you don't need to paint it. It's really helpful if you need it. Um, in this case, we don't need it that much because we just want to show some, some, some passes. No. Um, yeah, I think for this case it's it's perfectly fine. You could also um, that I really recommend is to uh, separate the post processing. So if you use something like glow on your camera, that I often use. So I think I use it every time when I make a render. So you have this glow thing. Uh, you could go for post processing, and it's no longer in the main image. You need to go to post and. It, Showing up, so now it's overexposed, so you can't see it that much. But if you set it a little bit lower, you can see we have this um, glow. And yeah, I think I just changed the 
in background color to a black one. Maybe maybe we'll show you also what you can do with uh, wait, not with the roughness. This needs to be like that, and here we can go for something like a reddish look. Um, and you can go for uh, octane object tag and set up the ID layer to something different, something like three. And then you can go here and go for ren render layer ID mask or render layer ID. And now you should have your render layer IDs and you can change, uh, you can, you can mask it out and uh, go for something like uh, a hue shift or something to, um, change the color in the background, but we can do this uh, also in this tutorial. So now I will render this out. Um, a really important thing is that you need to notice is you can't use your denoiser on the light passes. That is not working. So you should render more samples or you need to uh, yeah, den denoise it in the post processing or you need to live with the noise that you get. That's um, a little bit sad that you can use the denoiser on the passes but yeah that's that's a problem and um the light passes are increasing your render time a little bit so i think that makes sense because um instead of um doing something like like the denoise volume pass um the renderer is not uh, taking out the, the information that they already uh, um, calculate so it needs to render separate images or separate uh, passes every time. So if you if you use the the reflection pass and the diffuse uh, diffuse pass and everything, the renderer is taking out the data that they already cr um, calculated and not rendering a whole new image. I think that makes sense. The exploitation makes sense. So yeah, this is how it works. And we just render one frame, and after that we. Uh, Take a look in Photoshop how it works.